If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson cries for every dime. Welcome to Simply the Law, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Simply the Law provides free legal advice and encourages happiness and quality of life. Now, here's Simply the Law with Gary C. Johnson. Hello, everyone. Welcome into Simply the Law. I am Keith Case Bolt, the guy that created this program, my dear friend Gary C. Johnson. Hello, folks. Guys and gals, thank you for letting us visit with you and talk with you. It is an honor, and again, thank you on behalf of Keith and myself for letting us be here. Because without you, we wouldn't have a chance to be here. Right? In fact, you are the VIPs in this deal, not us. You. Thank you again, awesome folks, my friends. Generally, I sit around for a little bit and wonder what I'm going to begin talking about in the program. And generally, something will come to me. I don't know where it comes from. Couldn't be from my brain. It's got to be from somebody else's. But anyhow, it dawned on me that I believe that one of my friends that's watching this may have had a situation where you've lost someone close to you. And it reminded me that I need to again mention to you folks, my friends, that the depth of the grief you're feeling is exactly equal to the joy that you felt from having the person be in your life. So understand your grief, embrace it, and actually, no matter how painful it is, appreciate the fact you've got it. Because if you didn't have the joy of the person in your life, you would not be able to feel that grief. Now that sounds rather harsh when you think about it, but it's true. So, when you hurt, understand that you're hurting because of the joy that you lost. And maybe it'll make it a little easier for you to get through it because it's almost impossible and you think you can't get through it, but you will. Okay? You, you know, my friend, when you, first, when you first told me that and I listened to you, when I had to experience it, when I did lose somebody that was close, I kind of realized what you said. It, it doesn't necessarily make it easier, but it makes you understand that it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to hurt because all of that means this person made you smile. They, they were a big part of your life. They brought joy to you. So I, I kind of put it into tears of happiness. I can say it's, it's tough. There's no question about it. But keep that in mind. You're weeping for what you've lost, the joy. And it's okay to weep. And it's okay to hurt. Because the loss is so horrible and tremendous. Now, I don't know why I felt like I needed to start this program talking about that. Maybe the good Lord intervenes. I don't know. But something told me that one of my friends has just lost someone and that they're going through this. So I started with it. Now, on a lighter note, any of you been fighting or criticizing, condemning and complaining or any of that stuff I keep telling you not to do? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? No, you're not, right? None of you are. <laughs> Especially Keith, you can tell by listening to him live that he's not done any of that. You know, it's it's amazing that uh, I probably know this lesson better than anybody because I've been with you so long, and yet you catch yourself. And I, you've said that's the first step when you catch yourself. At least you're acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. But you catch yourself being critical or condemning or complaining. And then you ask yourself the big question, 
why am I doing this? Why am I taking, why am I making myself miserable by doing these three things? You have to remind yourself. Like I say, my friends, if you understand when you're doing it, you're probably out in front of about 90% of the people. If you just understand you're doing it. Because first, you, when you start understanding you're doing it, then you can start moving forward to change and try to keep from doing it. Uh, you these know, lessons are not easy. Gary, one of the biggest things that on this criticizing, condemning, and complaining, and that you've pointed out, if there's anything I, I can't stand now, is I can't stand to see somebody doing it to somebody that is performing a service. And you have taken the time to point out the people that are waiting your table, th that are, are at the cash register. Anybody that does a criticism or condemning or complaining there, shame on you, because that's, that's, right. that's a place it cannot be tolerated. Well, when you get right down to it, Keith is right, but there's no real place that you should tolerate it inside of you. You need to work with you. You can't prevent what other people are doing, but you can make yourself a better person by simply not doing those things, trying to be impeccable with the word. If someone starts trying to gossip about someone, don't join in. Really hard not to do because I mean, everybody loves a little gossip, right? <laughs> but you will find yourself changing. And you'll find yourself actually being someone that people love to see coming. That people will smile and they'll light up when they see you coming instead of saying, oh no, how do we get away from this guy or this gal? Huh? Won't happen because you will have evolved into a truly, truly decent person, which you are. Every one of you is a good, decent person. But yet good, decent people fall into the trap of criticizing, condemning, and complaining. If you can learn to control those things, then you will be who you really are. How many of you criticized just Come on. And then thought back on it a little while later and regretted it. Yeah. How many of you have complained about something and a little while later uh, that regret sets in? Or condemn something and later, oh no, I wish I'd kept my mouth shut. What I'm saying to you is try to learn to not participate in those things that later you're going to regret, that's going to make you feel bad. Because no, nothing, nothing constructive can ever come from criticizing, condemning, or complaining. You know, it is nothing but negativity. Gary, the other thing is for any of us who have been criticized, and I think we all have, we know how that stings. I mean, to be criticized, it hurts, it hurts deep. So if it hurts us, why would we ever want to do that to another human being? We do it mindlessly. We don't think. We put the old mouth in gear before we put the brain in gear, and that's a disaster every single time. So, my friends, you, this week, you're going to concentrate on putting the brain in gear before you put the mouth we let the clutch out on the mouth, okay? You hold that clutch in for a little while before you let it out. Oh, that's going to be tough to do, my friend, because let me tell you something. Those lips, they love to part, and it's like the words fly out before you can grab them and pull them back in. I talk a lot to my son, GC, about these things. And he was telling me about an instance. He said, Dad, I believe I might have messed up. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I was giving this advice to somebody the other day. Oh. And about halfway through it, I realized they hadn't asked for my advice. And the more I talked, 
the matter they were getting because I was giving them some advice that they had not asked for. And I realized, he said to me, that all I was doing was trying to show them how much smarter I was than they were and that I was actually criticizing them and pretending I was giving them advice. And he said, I tried to fix it, and I caught it. So what I'm saying to you folks is be aware. Unsolicited advice, when you start giving unsolicited advice, that is nothing but criticism in camouflage. I'll say it again, unsolicited advice is criticism in camouflage. Don't do it. If you can make yourself not do it. But you know, that's the trickiest one of all. Of mm -hmm. all the things that you're teaching us, that could be the hardest because we think we're helping. Well, we, we convince ourselves. Of oh, I, I'm being a good friend. Mm -hmm. This is my pal. I've got to, I've got to give him this advice. Or this is my coworker. I need to tell them, if it were me, here's what I would do. How many times, my friends, have you warned somebody about this person they were dating and then looked around and they married them? <laughs> now, neither one of them will speak to you. Huh? Think about it. <laughs> now, you know I'm laughing because I know all of our friends at home are laughing because we have said, I'd never go out with her or I wouldn't, I wouldn't marry him. Or, and then they end up together and there's kind of egg on your face because you're thinking, now what do I do? <laughs> When, if you put the old brain in gear and kept your mouth shut, understanding that people are going to live their lives their way, they're not going to live their lives your way. The only person that can live your life your way is you. With that comes the responsibility to make yourself happy. And then if you make yourself happy, maybe you can nudge somebody else along a little bit. And that's the best you can hope for. Let's take a break. We'll come right back. Boy, wasn't that a great point to end this first segment on? Uh, if we can work on ourselves and we can get to the point where we're happy, then maybe we can start trying to help someone else. Stay with us. This is Simply the Law with Gary C. Johnson, and we'll be back right after this. In 2015, a company called Jewel Labs launched a marketing campaign to target smokers, non-smokers, and your children. The Jewel e-cigarette was supposed to be a replacement for tobacco and be safe. Instead, it has become an epidemic, even causing death. Jewel created a sleek, high-tech way of delivering the highest dosage of nicotine possible. And who owns Jewel? Big Tobacco. To find out your rights, go to GaryCJohnson.com or call Pound Hurt. Welcome back to Simply the Law. You know, it's good to be able to laugh at some of your mistakes in life. And I want everybody to know the lessons that Gary is teaching. If we can just work on them a little bit, Gary, it's all about bringing more happiness to your life. If you can figure out how to do what I'm talking about, you will be happy. That's simple. But there's going to be no reason for you not to because you'll stay out of trouble. If you don't do what I'm talking about, you'll probably stay in trouble and you might have a little misery in your life. Let's go to the computer. I've got some stuff I want to talk to my friends about. There's our number if any of you need to call us. You can also dial pound hurt on your cell phone. We're in Lexington. If you need to get hurt or someone down there that way needs somebody to help them out, we've got an office there in Lexington. Go to GaryCJohnson.com. In general, please, my friends, make sure you have your underinsurance. Okay? Underinsurance. Now, you've heard us talk about the fact that I go across the country to different places, Denver, Atlanta, all kinds of places, Wyoming, Montana, New Orleans and teach other lawyers, organizations, their trial lawyers association, about how I do what I do. And this is some of the things that I'm gonna to talk to you about that I start off with when I actually am teaching them. I say to them, 
Every act of negligence is a result of a choice to violate a safety rule. There's no such thing as it's just an accident. If there's no safety rule violated, there will be no collision, no wreck, whatever. Gary, I had someone ask me about this the other day. We had talked about it on the radio. Is there ever an accident? I mean, if you're struck by lightning, is that an accident? That's an act of God. Okay. Still it's, not an accident. No. So there is no such thing as an accident. I don't accident. even think they use the word accident in England at all because it's not an accident. It wouldn't have happened unless someone did something they shouldn't have done. So it's, it's yeah. almost like tracing it backwards. Why did this event take place? And that's what you do because it's not an accident. Yeah. Okay. The, back to the computer. One well, of the other things I say to them, those young lawyers, is you need to spend some time before you accept or reject a case. Otherwise, you may find yourself broke because there are some cases you can't possibly win and you better not take them because six months or a year down the road, you'll figure it out. And by then, you've spent a lot of time and a lot of money on that case. Be careful what you take. And here's another thing I teach them that they don't understand. Your case can never be worth more than the amount of insurance. I've never seen anyone get money from someone above the insurance since I've been practicing law. So when you look at a case, you have to see where is the insurance and where can I find it. Most people that break the safety rules have minimum limits or no insurance at all. Is that the biggest misconception, not only among young attorneys, but among our friends that are viewing this show that they believe if somebody did you wrong, there's this pot of money over here that you're going to be paid. It doesn't always work that way. Let's say somebody that's on drugs or drunk hits you. What do you think the odds are that they are going to have either any insurance or more than the minimum? Slim to none. Now, do you think there's any chance of ever getting anything from them? Because if they're that type of person, they don't have anything. And I guarantee they wouldn't have a home, probably don't work, nothing, zero. Therefore, you're going to be limited in your recovery to the amount of insurance. That's why every single program, my friends, I preach to you, buy under insurance on your own insurance policy. Because that gives you another layer of insurance that you can tap to help you out to get by. One emergency room visit will probably take up the no fault and the liability insurance. So, but I teach these lawyers, I say, look, your case is never going to be worth more than the insurance. Your job is to make sure you find every dime of insurance that's out there. Dig, 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 find out who they're living with, where they're living, what insurance policies they've got. Could they be listed on their parents' policy? Find everything you can find. Then you will know I have some idea of what the case is worth. Until then, you won't know. Let's take another break, and we'll come right back. Important information, uh, especially that comes back to the underinsurance that Gary started the program with. Stay with us. Gary C. Johnson, right after this break. Hello, I'm Keith Casebold of Casebold Marketing. Television advertising, or any advertising, can be intimidating. Where do you advertise? What message do you get across to the people? And how much budget do you really need to spend? Well, that's what I do. I'll help you find the right media for your demographic. Then we'll work on your identification and unique selling points so you can get more customers. And we'll get a budget that'll get you a return on your investment. Call me at 606-218-1198. Let's get started right now. Welcome back into Simply the Law. Gary, probably on a weekly basis or a daily basis, all of us have a near miss. 
We do. I, I mean, it, it's close every day of our lives. Now, the point you just made about the people that are hitting you, you can almost sit at a red light and look at some of the vehicles around you and say, this person probably has got just the bare minimum. That person probably doesn't have any insurance. And as you said, those normally are the individuals that's going to break the safety rules and hit you. Those are the people that life has not treated well. They've made poor choices in life very poor choices and now they're paying for those choices and they're probably self-medicating with either drugs or alcohol and they're on the highway dangerous extremely dangerous out there again that's why i push to my friends how important it is for you to have under insurance on your own policy and some of you have not done it like i say i told you last week about one that hadn't yeah do it because you can end up totally bankrupt and destitute by being in a wreck that some person runs over you through no fault of your own. Gary, I want to ask you another question too because you had talked on the radio about teaching these attorneys and I, I had an individual ask me, well wait a minute, attorneys all went to law school the things that you're teaching are not in the law books. The method of judo law that you've developed, that's not in the law book. These are things that you have developed and that's why you've been invited across the United States to teach your method. Well, you have to know some law in law school. You have to know the letter of the law in order to buy Sabar. How do you put it in practice? <laughs> How do you use it? How do you deal with it? What things are going to be coming at you that you would never expect? That is where experience comes in. <laughs> and it's, it's tough. It's hard. And you've got really, insurance companies don't hire any dumb lawyers. Insurance companies only hire the best lawyers, right? Would it be safe to say, my friend, for our friends watching, it's equivalent of you passing your driver's uh, written exam, but if you've never been the, behind the wheel of a car, you don't know what you're getting ready to get into, right? So, well, that's a pretty good analogy. It's like when you first get behind the wheel of that car, you know all the little rules, but you can't drive the car. It takes time. It takes experience. Uh, smart lawyers pick it up quick. Smart lawyers go to seminars. They learn from other lawyers that's been there that's made the mistakes. Smart lawyers invite other lawyers to come and explain to them what, they, what they've learned and the mistakes they've made. As I tell them, I say, look, I'm not a big genius, those young lawyers. I say, these are things that I've been bit by that I've recorded and I've used and I've learned and I've tried to use to make myself a better lawyer. This isn't some magic to it, it's just life. And I'm gonna share it with you, you do, it, do with it whatever you want, but I recommend you pay some attention so you won't get bit too. Let's take our last break and we'll be right back. Now there was some really good advice. Gary's been there, done that. So he's, he's seen it. Makes sense to me, stay with us. Simply the Law will conclude with Gary C. Johnson after this. In 2015, a company called Jewel Labs launched a marketing campaign to target smokers, non-smokers, and your children. The Jewel e-cigarette was supposed to be a replacement for tobacco and be safe. Instead, it has become an epidemic, even causing death. Juul created a sleek, high-tech way of delivering the highest dosage of nicotine possible. And who owns Juul? Big Tobacco. To find out your rights, go to GaryCJohnson.com or call Pound Hurt. Welcome back into Simply the Law. Gary, that was a really good segment. We ended that with you've been there and done that. And I'm sure at this time when you see defense attorneys from insurance companies trying to do the rabbit trick and get you to chase things, you're just smiling and saying, sorry, friend. I've, I've been down that road. I know exactly where you're going. 
And then talking about what they don't teach you in law school is someone comes to see a lawyer, and this is what I teach these lawyers, and, I, and they've been hurt, and you're saying, okay, I'll represent you. Well, what do you do to make sure you can represent them? Let me just give you an example of one of the things I'm talking about. Let's go back to the computer. I tell them, I say, the first thing you have to do if you're going to represent someone and do your job is you have to request every single medical record that this client has ever had, not just for this wreck, but all their medical records. You got to get them to give you releases. You got to find out, you got to ask them what doctors they've been to. Some of them won't remember all their doctors. You got to get the first batch of medical records, look through them and see if other doctors are mentioned in those medical records so you can request their medical records. It's a really a lot of work. But that's the first thing a person, a lawyer has to do if they're going to represent their client. You have to know what the medical records are. You have no choice. It's not an option. And I say, then you request all medical records that are referenced in the medical records because the client couldn't remember. And then you request all prescription records from every possible pharmacy your client could have used, period. You send a blanket request out. Then you've gathered some information that may be of some benefit to you and will be of some benefit to you to keep you from getting caught in the defense traps that they're going to set based on the medical records that they are going to get. Well, the first things the defense will do in a case <clears throat> is they will send you a request to have your client sign a release to allow them to get their medical records. Now, I've had attorneys say, okay, I'm going to have the defense get the medical records and then I'll get a copy of them. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Big mistake. And if any lawyers are watching it, that's a big mistake because the defense may inadvertently not send you a critical medical record that you need. Oh, I would never do it on purpose, naturally. <laughs> in other words, don't put the work you're supposed to be doing off on somebody else. Do it yourself. Then you will know what you're doing. This is what I teach these people. And I'm going to talk to you some more next week on what I teach these lawyers. My friend, no wonder you're in demand across the United States teaching. I mean, what you just pointed out was pure gold, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't know that. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. On behalf of Gary C. Johnson. I'm Keith Casebolt, and I want to thank you so much for taking this time to tune into the program. As always, Gary and I look forward to seeing you again next week, right here at this same time. Thank you for watching Simply the Law, a program created by Gary C. Johnson. Until next week, may you be safe, blessed, and happy.